Good morning, everyone. My name is Masae Sakae, English PR manager at JICA Colombia. Today, as a continuation of the talk from last time, we want to share with you the progress of our attempt to contribute to the peace process by JICA Colombia, together with Mr. Camillo, our resident representative. Mr. Camillo, you share with the new to viewer the information about our activity to translate the voices of the victims of conflict and violence in the country. We have dealt with the translation of these two books, I will never forget your name, and heaven does not abandon me. Have you finished your translation? Yes, I already finished the translation of the first book. I am currently checking the very Colombian colloquial words, some of which are not easy for foreigners like me to understand. We can say that it has the difficulty since they are the very direct words of the victims suffered, just in the places of violence. Surely the book has great value as priceless testimony of Colombian history. So Mr. Kamiju, could you tell us about some of those victim voices? Okay. These two books contain the voices of uh, 40 victims in total. At this time, I'd like to share with you some of the voices ex expressed in the first book. We uh, actually uh, happened would be a bit strong for some susceptible people. So um, if you feel uneasy, please change the channel immediately. Well, about the victim that appear in the first book, I will never forget mm -hmm. your name. Yeah. What's that kind of people and what kind of express experience did they have? The victims are very diversified. For example, the farmers, due to uh, both the intensification of the war and the uh, pressure of the armed groups that wanted to control the rural areas, had to abandon their native lands. They became exile or domestic refugees. The book uh, begins with the, the experience of a boy who stepped on an anti-personal mine and uh, lost his legs on the way of displacement. These displaced farmers looking for a place of peace immigrate to the city of Medellin, the second largest city in the country. There, starting to build barracks, they formed a neighborhood for the poor. However, Life there is not promising at all. This is to say, zero level of human security. There are almost endless stories of families who lost their loved ones for the urban armed conflict. For example, trivia amity between neighbors turned into more serious mutual aggression, such as murder and revenge ending in carnage by throwing hand grenades at the house of enemies in extreme cases. Really? Mm -hmm. Although you are talking about the past of almost more than one decade ago, mm -hmm. just imagining it, I feel terrified. Okay. We can understand that uh, in the urban area or uh, peripheral areas of a big uh, city, the conflictive situation was so serious, as uh, in rural areas. There, the situation was uh, even more serious by the existence of the confrontation between armed groups from the extreme left and right, complicated by the economic interest of tra trafficking gangsters. Innocent children, pitifully, became delayed as a member of gangs and uh, urban subversive groups to rule their lives. The, there, people also found phenomena such as social cleansing and uh, private justice. What do social cleansing 
and private justice mean? In much summarized words, uh, social cleansing is an activity of the armed groups that control the conflictive zone, looking for people who supposedly committed crimes or immoral things and punishing them almost arbitrarily. A private justice, on the other hand, is uh, making adjustment of uh, account or revenge for the request of the victims of the crimes. Before, there are some people who, instead of going to the state food system, went to this clandestine way, I imagine. Mm. Yes, but sometimes it was not very clandestine at all. For example, the hitmen put signs on the corpse indicating their crimes and uh, the reason for being punished as a rapist, traitor, or informer, and so on. By the way, the, the offenders are also the victims. There appears a testimony of a peasant girl who was witnessing a social cleansing. In a, in a rural village, um, there was a murder case of a girl. She was strangled and uh, buried in forest. Later, her stepmother of 18 years old was arrested by the armed groups and was burned alive in front of all the villagers. No one can justify what uh, this woman had done. However, she was a psychologically traumatized person for having suffered from uh, child rape. She's also the victim of social violence in this country. And uh, that happened just uh, 20 years ago. Well, <laughs> and the other story, which we shouldn't ignore it? Yes, a uh, man witness uh, uh, writes his uh, experience as a kidnapped person. He testified that he had seen a macabre event of the death of a peasant uh, pregnant mother. She was raped and murdered in front of her young children. This man also talks about genocide committed by those armed men of uh, innocent farmers as a way to demonstrate their power or rather to enjoy death with torture. Those guys killed the victims using chainsaw, mutilating the limb live. It's so shocking that uh, I'm going to stop uh, telling you here. However, one thing I have to emphasize is that uh, we who live now have a strong obligation to avoid the reproductions of uh, such tragedies. Okay, listening to your explanation, mm -hmm. I understood the complexity of the country's conflict and that the violence can be persistent since it involves new generation. It's really without confusion. However, Mr. Camillo, despite everything, Colombia is vigorously building peace. That means that there is a remedy, the hope and the positive minds of people and society, right? Thank you very much, uh, Sakai-san for making a very, very good point. Colombians, despite the two desperate situation, do not abandon their progress. In the second book, Heaven Does Not Abandon Me, yes, appeared voices of the mothers whose sons were taken away and the wives of the kidnapped. They are the victims of the tragedy but at the same time, they are the fighters to survive her two tragic wars and uh, overcome the difficult situations of her and of uh, her families. I think that people suffer, but at the same time, by the na our nature, we have great strength to overcome our suffering. Mm -hmm. I think this will be a very strong energy to lead us and our society towards positive change. Next time I'd like to introduce such voices to everybody. 
by listening to their voices, I'm so sure all of us can think that the construction and the consolidation of the peace process is possible if each one of us trusts in the positive force that we naturally have. Thank you. Mr. Kamijo, we are waiting for your next presentation. Okay. Yes, I will make an uh, effort to present it as soon as possible. Well, today we shared with you one of the work to contribute to the construction of peace in Colombia. The translation of the dialect and living voices of the victim of conflict and violence. Regarding these details of the translation, we want you to present through this YouTube and Facebook channel. So we want you to subscribe to our official channel. So we'll see you again on this channel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you. See you.